Well, hi there, boys and girls. We're going to start our derivatives unit, and you have a copy of this. I realize it looks a little fuzzy here on my smart notebook, but and in the interest of time, I'm not going to read this to you. But everything that is underlined and bolded, I would consider maybe a, these are definitions like a vocabulary list. So you, I want you to read through and make sure that you know and understand what average velocity, instantaneous velocity, everything I have bolded here, what, what, they, what they mean. I'm just going to give you a general idea. Average velocity is simply a slope equation. You can think about this as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, just the regular slope equation, or f of b minus f of a over b minus a. We're going to be using this in today's video. Instantaneous velocity you really can't do as a fraction because you'd end up dividing by zero. We want to know how quickly or how the rate of change that something is changing with respect to another variable instantaneously. I don't know if I said that correctly. Maybe you can just read this here. Um, we're going to start off with my example. We're going to draw some secant lines and figure out the average velocity. And then the, over, the idea is that we're going to draw a secant line between two points that are pretty close together. And then we're going to scooch these dots closer and closer together to see what would happen if we force this to become a tangent line. So we'd like to you know, put a secant line between these two. We're going to figure out what the slope of that line is. And then we're going to scoot a little closer and do another one. And then scoot, we're going to keep scoot, scooching it closer until we get our idea of the slope of that tangent line right there. And that's going to be our instantaneous velocity or instantaneous rate of change. So um, just again, I want you to uh, make a vocabulary list of everything that's bolded here. I'm not going to read that to you. Um, we, we're going to deal with two very important derivative equations here. This is the definition of the derivative you should have learned last year in pre-cal. Uh, I've got two separate forms. There's an alternative form. Um, you're going to use the top one if you simply want the derivative, and then maybe you're going to use it at different values of x. The bottom one's more useful if you just want one slope at one point. You would use this alternative form there. I'll show you both of those. But let's get an idea of this making the secant line approach the tangent line. So we've got a diver jumping from a diving board. It's 32 feet above the water. The position of the diver from the water is given by this formula. This is a physics formula. By the way, it doesn't say it here, but this right here would be the initial velocity. <coughs> graph this on your graphing calculator and sketch the result below. Well, I actually have that here. Let's go to my y equals. I actually have two things that we're doing today. I'm going to turn that one off and I'm going to turn that one on. Here's the graph. It's a negative quadratic, so this shouldn't shock anybody. A negative quadratic looks something like this. This y-intercept here would be 32. So let's come back here and graph that. Up here at 32, it looks like we went up a little bit and it just came down like this. And I'm not going to draw to the left. That was negative time. All right, now find the average velocity, average rate of change at which the diver is moving for the time interval 1 to 1.5. And this is where you're going to use your average velocity formula. That formula is going to be F of 1.5. I guess I really should use proper notation here. I'm going to change this to S. Since they called it S of T, I better use that same notation. So I'm going to plug in 1.5 in for S, minus, then I'm going to plug in 1 for S, and then I'm going to divide this all by 1.5 minus 1. This is simply Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And you plug these in your calculator, and I'm going to get, I get 20 minus 32 all divided by 0.5, which is negative 12 divided by 0.5, which is negative 24 feet per second. That's the average velocity on that time interval. Now, why do you think this average speed is negative? Well, you know, gravity takes over. This guy's actually falling down, so his the feet are, are decreasing by 24 per second over that time interval from 1 to 1.5. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make these intervals get closer and closer and closer to 1. We're interested in what's the instantaneous rate of change at 1. So let's start off with 0.9 to 1. So you want to go to your table set, which is diamond F4, and you want to make sure this independent is on ask so that you can type in different things into your table. After you do that, I've typed several of these in already because I wanted to do this first. And so I've got values. Now this is going to round to two or three decimal places. So if you hover over it, 
you can see here that's exactly 33.44, but this one rounded to 1.58, but the value down here is the actual value. And this is what I'm going to do in my calculations. So from my table, I'm going to go do a whole bunch of different quotients, difference quotients, sorry, I'm going to stop that, just like I did on B, and I'm going to write those values down. And I want you to, to verify, I want you to do the same calculations that you get the same answers. So let's get, get back here. When I did <coughs> S of 1 minus S of 0.9 divided by 1 minus 0.9, I got negative 14.4 feet per second. I'm not going to put my units here because I don't have time. I don't have room on me. And then when I did S of 1 minus S of 0.9 over 1 minus 0.99, then I got negative 15.84. And then here, when I did this really tiny interval, I got negative 15.984. And then we're going to check on the right-hand side as well. This is like squeezing in from the left. We're going to squeeze in from the right as well. I got negative 17.6 on this interval, negative 16.16 on this interval, and negative 16.016 on that interval. And I'm supposed to use this table to estimate the instantaneous rate of change at which the diver is moving at exactly at time t equals 1. So as we squeezed in from the left and as we squeezed in from the right, I think it's a pretty good estimate to say it was negative 16 feet per second exactly at 1. You're going to be doing this in your homework, filling in a table uh, using this very important formula, average rate of change formula. Let's go do now an exact derivative problem. This next example, I've got x squared minus 4x. By the way, this is supposed to be at x equals 3. And that's a fairly simple thing to graph because we can factor out an x and we can get our roots. And we know exactly where this crosses the x-axis at x equals 0 and out here, here at x equals 4. And we all know that quadratics have a vertex that is halfway between the roots. Um, it's, it's symmetric um, through the roots there. So halfway between 0 and 4 is 2. And then we can actually plug 2 in to figure out what this minimum value is. 2 squared is 4 minus 4 times 2 is 8. 4 minus 8 is negative 4. So this would be my graph. I'm try and sketch this. I'm not going to be, ah, sorry. That's really, really bad. This is hard to do on an air slate, so please forgive me. Okay, <laughs> man, that's bad. Anyway, that's, that's a sketch there. Based on your sketch, do you expect... Oh, I'm also supposed to draw the tangent line to the graph at the point where x equals 3. So let me come back here to my marker. x equals 3 is out here. Here is a dot for the function f of 3, and I'm going to go grab a line and draw a tangent line. See if I can do that a little bit better. All right, so there is the tangent line at x equals 3. All right, based on your sketch, do you expect f prime of 3 to be positive or negative? Well, this tangent line right here, this slope is positive. It's going up. Therefore, I expect f prime of 3 to be positive, so I think it's going to be greater than 0. Now, we're going to compute f prime of 3 in three different ways both of those definitions and also that shortcut we learned last year and then we're going to write down a, a tangent line equation. Alright, so here we go. We're doing part C, part 1 first. Definition of the derivative. So f prime of x is the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So I'm going to plug those in. My equation is x squared minus 4x. So here is f of x plus h. Oh, didn't write that. x plus h squared minus 4 times x plus h. There is f of x plus h minus f of x, you better put this in parentheses, all divided by h. All right, so we've got the limit as h approaches 0. Now if we do all this algebra and factor this out, or expand it out, we're going to get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 4x minus 4h minus x squared plus 4x. So just expand it out the numerator, and in the denominator I still have h. So let's see what happens here. Um, my x squareds are going to cancel. My 4x's cancel. And I'm left with something that has a common factor of h. I'm going to go ahead and write it down before I factor that out. 2xh plus h squared minus 4h all over h. Now our problem here is if we plug in 0 for h, 
we're going to get 0 over 0. So we've got to do some factoring. So I can see that there's a common factor in the numerator of h. So that's going to leave me 2x plus h minus 4 all over h. And now I can cancel that h and then plug in 0 for h and I will get 2x minus 4. So the derivative is 2x minus 4 and I'm interested in the derivative at the value 3 and so I'll plug that in for x and I'll get 6 minus 4 and it's 2, positive 2. And I can believe that over here. This, that slope was positive so up 2 over 1 at that point of 3. Now we're going to do the second part by using the alternative definition which was the limit as x approaches c where c is this value we, where we want the slope of f of x minus f of c all over x minus c. So we want the value, we want the derivative at 3. So we're going to have the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x. Well, what is f of x? It's just the function x squared minus 4x. Then we want f of 3. What do we get if we plug 3 in for x? Well, 3 squared is 9. 4 times 3 is 12. 9 minus 12 is negative 3. So f of 3 was negative 3, all divided by x minus 3. So I've got x squared minus 4x plus 3, all divided by x minus 3. Ah, 3. Sorry about that. I'm going to clean that up a little bit. And on top of that, I left a little limit statement out here. So I want the limit as x approaches 3 of all this. Scoot this down. It gets hard when I write at the bottom of the page there. Which leaves me x minus 3, we're going to factor, times x minus 1 all over x minus 3. And I should have had my limit statement right here. Those cancel, so I'll have the limit as x approaches 3 of x minus 1. So you plug in 3 for x and you get 2 again. So there's a way of finding the slope there. Now we're going to do it, the shortcut that we learned last year. Last year you should have learned the power rule. If f of x is x squared minus 4x, then f prime of x is, we bring this exponent down in front and subtract 1 off that. So it's 2x to the first minus and the derivative of 4x is just 4 because that's like x to the first. You bring the 1 down and subtract and that becomes x to the 0 and it goes away. And so there's our derivative and if you plug in 3 you get 2. Alright, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to do our tangent line equation um, at the point 3 and we're going to leave it in point slope form. So we need our tangent line equation looks like this. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. That should look familiar from algebra. We were at the point 3 comma negative 3. Remember when I plugged in 3 to x squared minus 4x? This is our point. This is our x1 and our y1. And our m is the derivative at 3. And we've calculated that three different ways to be 2. So I'm just going to plug it in. y plus 3, y minus negative 3, y plus 3 equals 2 times x minus 3. And we're going to leave our answer. That is the equation of that tangent line that we drew right up here. We're going to leave our answer like that. We're not going to simplify it. And I will see you guys tomorrow.